Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to go through a neurological exam of the upper limb. We've been through a neurological exam of the lower limb which will be linked in the cards above. So the first thing we want to do is do a general inspection of the upper limb. We want to look at any abnormal postures, we want to look at any scarring, any wasting of the muscles, any involuntary movements, any fasciculations or any tremor. Then we're going to go on to a quick screening of the upper motor neuron lesion signs. So the first thing we can look at is pronator drift. So okay, if you want to bring your arms out in front of you, palms up to the ceiling, and then if you close your eyes for me. And what we're looking for with this would be a pronation drift of the hand when the eyes are closed for 30 seconds. So what you'd be looking for is with the, with the patient in this position, the hand would be turning into that pronation position without them knowing that they were doing that. So that a positive test would be that pronation drift. I'll also put an example of a pronation drift over the top of the video so you can see that as well. The other thing we can do is a quick screening test for um, the upper limb. It's just look at tone. So just with the patient, just taking the patient through passive flexion, extension of the arms, just seeing how well you can move them around and just literally taking them through abduction, extension, flexion, extension of the elbow. And what you're looking for here and what you're feeling for is, is altered tone. Um, a clasp knife deformity in Parkinson's would be where you really struggle to get them to um, flex the elbow and then suddenly it would flex, so it would break and it would flex towards the um, shoulder. Um, also you can get cogwheeling, which is again classic in Parkinson's, where as you try to lift the arm up there would be a juddering of the arm and it would be quite hard to, to lift up. So there'd be a, a kind of an extension moment as you try and flex the arm up as well. So there's that rigidity there, which is a positive sign for upper motor neuron lesion sy syndrome and also for things like Parkinson's, etc. The other thing you can do is a Hoffman's test for this sort of thing as well. So Hoffman's test we've done before, but basically you would be holding the, the patient's hand you'd be holding the middle finger and you'd be flicking down on the middle finger and you're looking for the ring finger and thumb to get closer together as you do that reflex. Again, I'll put a, hot, a true positive Hoffman sign over the top of this video so that you can have a look. So with sensation testing, we'd be looking for um, using a cotton wool bud or a tissue and we would just look for sensation. Okay, if you close your eyes for me, let me know when you can feel me. What we can then do also is test side to side at the same time, and then testing right side versus left side and saying whether it feels the same or if it feels different. If it feels significantly different one side, how does it feel different? Does it feel more intense? Does it feel less uh, intense? What I'll put on the screen as well is the dermatome so you can see which part of the arm would relate to which nerve root. The other thing you can do with sensation testing is look at sharp and blunt. So again, with this neuro tips, okay, if you, again, if you close your eyes for me, tell me if you feel sharp or blunt. With this testing as well, you're looking at whether they can discriminate between sharp and blunt and also whether they can do that on both sides and how good they are at doing that. Then we can use a 128 hertz tuning fork for vibration sensation and we're using a distal bony prominence for this. So again, we could use the thumb and we're going onto a, a bony prominence, so side of the thumb, and you just literally would strike and then say, can you feel that, Kate? Yeah. Tell me when it stops. Yeah. So then we've got our myotomes that we're gonna go through. So for myotomal um, testing, what you're doing is a resistance test. Okay, if you bend down towards this side and keep the head there, don't let me move you and relax. Then you can have your um, arms to the side. So if you bring your arms out to the side of that and hold that then there, don't let me move you and relax. C5, so shoulder abduction, C5. And then C6 would be elbow flexion. So, okay, if you hold the arm there, don't let me move you down and relax. And then C7 would be tricep extension. So hold the hand there, don't let me move you up. That's good, relax. Then you've got C8, so if you bring your fingers uh, there for me and don't let me move you down. So extension of the fingers, so you can do each finger individually as you do this one. 
Then we've got thumb abduction. Hold there, don't even move you. And then little finger. So if you bring the fingers together, little finger to the side. Hold there, don't let me move you. And that would be your T1. So you basically would, and we'll put a, a link or a picture rather of the myotomes as well. There'll be, there's more myotomes you can, can look at. So I'll put all the ones on the screen somewhere here, somewhere. Um, but essentially you're looking for resistance and you're looking for good side versus uh, problem side, seeing where there's a difference in terms of weakness. Um, and you're looking for true weakness of that area and you're comparing side to side. So for our reflexes, you've got the bicep reflex for C5, C6. So in supine, you just literally get the patient's arm to relax on your um, thigh. You come in with your thumb onto the um, bicep tendon and then you just strike your thumb and you'll see that reflex of the bicep. So for brachioradialis, again, not patient in a nice comfortable position, and then you want to strike that, that brachioradialis tendon, and you're looking for that supination reflex of the hand. So for triceps, which is a C6, C7 reflex, you want to bring the arm, just abduct it to the side, so you've got against gravity, and then you're just striking the tricep tendon, and you're looking for that extension moment, that extension reflex of the arm. Again, with reflexes, I'm going to put up on the screen the value system or the rating scale that you would give uh, the reflex. So you give the reflex a number, which gives it an objective measure so that you can test this at the start with patients and then you can test it as you go through your treatments. We're going to look at upper limb tension tests now. So the first one we're going to do is a median nerve. So with the median nerve, what we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to stabilize the shoulder into a depression bring it up into abduction. Then we're gonna add some external rotation of the shoulder. We're gonna take the wrist into an extended position. And then we're gonna just, I like to hold my thigh. And then we're gonna extend, nice and relaxed. We're gonna extend the elbow down. And you ask the patient to let you know when they get to their limit. Yes. Now in that position there, Kate, if you wanna side flex your head away and then back to the middle. And what you'd be doing is looking for when they side flex their head away, does that increase their symptoms? Does it change their symptoms? And just generally you're looking for how much range they've got doing that versus the other side. And then you would compare that and see whether the, you felt there was some sort of median nerve involvement. Okay, for the radial nerve, I would normally, to be fair, do this from the other side of the plinth, but for the purposes of the video, you're not gonna be able to see. So I'm gonna do it from this side. It doesn't really matter. Again, it's more about the positioning. So first of all, we're gonna go, uh, okay, thumb in between your fingers and just grip them around the thumb. We're gonna pronate the hand and rotate internally. So we're gonna get internal rotation of the hand. We're gonna flex the wrist. We're gonna keep the elbow straight. We're gonna depress the elbow. Again, I like to come in from the other side and actually use and get quite low down for this one. But in this position now, we're gonna then abduct the arm and we're just gonna ask Kate to tell us when yeah. <clears throat> you get to your limit. Yeah. So keep your eyes looking straight at the ceiling and then take your left ear, right ear down to your right shoulder, perfect. And then back again. And you're looking then to see whether things change. You wanna make sure that when they're doing that, they're actually side flexing, which is again, again tensioning the nerve root more and that's for your radial nerve. Ulnar nerve wise, we're gonna basically, again, bring the arm into a slight depression bring the hand out. So we're basically gonna take the hand out into this position, extending the wrist, and then we're gonna abduct the shoulder, bringing the hand and palm and wrist up towards the ear. Again, I'd usually do this from a slightly different position for the purposes of the video, we're gonna do that. And then we'd ask any symptoms, and then get you to side flex the head away again, okay? And then back to the middle and you're looking for a reproduction in that patient's symptoms if you felt there was an ulnar nerve involvement. For proprioception or joint position sensing, what you can do is hold the distal um, thumb, um, the distal PIP joint basically, and then get Kate to close her eyes. And then what I'd be doing is basically saying to her, holding at the side rather than on top like this of the nail bed, you wanna to hold to the side of the thumb. So then you would say, Extended or flexed? Extended. Flexed. Extended. Flexed. 
So you're looking for whether the person can tell you whether the, um, the nail bed is either extended or flexed. So for upper limb coordination, checking the cerebellum, we can do a finger to nose test. So okay, if you have your hands up like that, and I'm gonna get you to bring your index finger of one hand to touch your nose, back down, same thing on the other side, back down, and if you close your eyes, do the same thing, back down, same thing on the other side. And then you'll be comparing and contrasting both sides. We can also check coordination with rapid alternating movements. So for the upper limb, okay, if you bring your hands out in front of you, and I want you to basically get your palm, so palm up, palm down, fast as you can. and then do the other side. So we'll be looking for whether there's a difference from side to side and generally whether they've got the ability to do that rapid alternating movements. If you enjoyed that one, then there's two other videos up here that I know you'll also really love. One of them being the neurological exam of the lower body. If you enjoyed this video, then please give us a like and let us know if you enjoyed it in the comments section below. Anything you want to ask, questions, comments, leave them in the comments section. Hopefully you really enjoyed it. Um, if you did, then consider subscribing because we do loads more videos like this and loads of other things around physiotherapy, therapy and fitness. I really enjoyed this one and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.